Hey everybody, it's Tom from the Corona team here and I just want to give you a quick overview of some of the bigger features that we've just released in Corona 14. So with that, I'd like to wish you a very good night. That is a very good night in your randos because the first feature we'll be looking at is one you've asked for, which is the night sky in the procedural sky. This was one of the top requests from our ideas portal. So now the Corona sky comes with stars, the Milky Way, and of course, the moon. You can either control everything realistically using longitude, latitude, and date and time, or just control it creatively like I have in these examples. The moon can have different phases, and of course it can all be animated and works with the procedural clouds. Another top request from you all, Corona can now render Gaussian splats. These give you a full 3D environment which casts realistic shadows and reflections onto your buildings or objects that you're placing in the scene. As well as a bending box to trim the outside of the splat, you can also use geometry of any shape with a Corona slicer material applied to cut away specific parts of the splat. On the AI side of things, the AI Enhancer now has new controls, so you can pick individual people or even faces specifically and apply your chosen enhancements such as changing a person's age, hair colour or mood. Meanwhile, the AI Material Generator creates a tileable material which includes diffuse, roughness and normal maps from an image. Here I used an image of some worn linoleum from my house, and I applied it to this scene. I also used the AI Enhancer to give the lady a suitable expression at having her nice kitchen decorated with this worn out old lino. Then there is the AI Upscaler. This upscales your image by two times or four times, sharpening the details but without changing or enhancing them. Last, you can now send the resulting image from your light mix edits up for enhancement rather than just being able to send the beauty pass. There are times when you have multiple scatters and each has a different setup, but you do want the results from each one to avoid creating overlapping objects. You can now control this with avoidance groups in the scatter lister, and within any given avoidance group you can define the priority of each scatter to obtain the results you're looking for. We've added a new procedural fabric material which lets you design the material from the weave etc. It's based on a white paper from Qatar and all, uh, and it's brand new in 2025, that white paper. Since it has lots of control options, as you can see here, we've also added a collection of presets to make it easy for you to get started with using it. We've made some initial improvements to the VFB2 based on your feedback, such as making the UI on the right take up less space, leaving more room for the render, giving you the option to have text labels as well as just the icons, opening the Enhance and Collaboration controls in a separate window, letting you flip the image horizontally for a bit of a visual and mental refresh, and more. We've also brought the CIE into alignment, that's the Corona Image Editor, into alignment with the VFB2, meaning the CIE now has all the features such as automatic exposure and white balance in the tone mapping, gamma gain and lift in the tone mapping, and more. We've added new options for shadows in the tune shader, you can now suppress the results of GI, and you can tint shadows with a solid color or be creative and tint them with a color ramp. Direct lights through volumetrics now clean up a little faster. We've also added a whole lot of other smaller features too, of course, as usual. Um, one of the bigger smaller features is we've got further for the rewrite of the UI into QT than we expected. Uh, we've done the Corona Physical Material, Corona Bitmap, the Corona Image Editor itself. Let me just check my list. The Layered Material, Volume Material, Hair Material, and Slicer Material. So all of these should help the UI of those be more responsive. We've added simple triplanar controls to the Corona Bitmap, so you don't always need to add a triplanar node unless you're after more control. The VFB can be now docked in 3ds Max. After the popularity of uh, a process shown by RenderRam, where you render to twice your desired resolution and then downscale um, to half size, uh, but when you render to twice the resolution, you render for significantly less time, maybe a noise target of 15% rather than 7% or 5%. Um, this was quite popular, so we've added a way to automatically save your render to half size from the Save menu. 
And that's it for this release. Um, the blog post has all the details. And meantime, one thing to keep in mind when you're doing those moon randos, be careful you don't discover that the person sitting next to you is a werewolf. <laughs>